first stage in the entrepreneurial journey is always the excitement, right? Like you post on Facebook, you go on Facebook Live, you announce your business, you get shiny business cards and flyers, you put up a website, everybody's cheering you on. My journey didn't really have that. As an elder millennial, I thought my parents who are old, uh, they need help and I gotta go into their business and I have to fix some things. You know, I knew nothing. And I was like, guys, I just graduated from college. Let me help you. So my mom graciously, she's like, yeah, you can start, but you're gonna start at the very bottom. I made $30,000. I made less than the job I had in California. And I, I showed up to help. Well, two years later, after helping and learning the biz from the ground up, she walks into the office and, she's, and she had been having some unfortunate health challenges. And she walked into the office and she said, Natalie, um, I'm having some severe health challenges. I need to figure out what is going on with me. And uh, you're in charge. Not only did she walk out to, to pursue this health journey, which thank you God, she's doing amazing now. And with her walked 70% of our revenue. So she walks out and there I am with 12 employees, 70% of the revenue just walked out the door. And she's like, you're in charge. I know you're capable, you can do this. So I did what any elder millennial would do <laughs> before going to Google. <laughs> I went into my car and I sobbed like Kim Kardashian, just sobbed, just sobbed. Why, why? And then a vision appeared and it was my mother in the passenger seat. And she said, Natalie, did you think this was gonna be easy? Did you think it was just gonna like poof magic and you were gonna like have all the success that you're so looking after? Like get up, let's go. I start to implement the things I'm learning, the strategies, I start to talk to mentors. I realize, you know what? Um, reoccurring revenue is awesome. So why don't we build out this property management side which before was only 30% of our business. So how do you do that? I didn't know how to do that, but I FSO. Do you know what FSO stands for? I feel like every entrepreneur should have a tattoo. FSO. Yes, you know how you know. I didn't even know. Figure shit out, yes. So, I'm gonna get that trademarked. So F FSO, figure shit out. So I'm like, how do you grow this thing? I, you know, I make payroll, like there was no, no money, you know? So I'm like, okay, I'll make cold calls, you know? Cold calls should actually be called freezing calls. Cause that's not just a little cold. It's real cold, you know? And someone doesn't know you, so I did some of those. I did a ton of networking, all, all the things that you all are doing. And so then we start to have success. And guess what happened then? I learned this phrase, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Because that's where I was in my journey. So anyways, so I go on this other, this journey, and it was more of an inner journey. Where I, where I started to ask, like, why am I doing this? Like, what is the purpose of this? Because then, because it's not about money, yet it, it is when you need the money, you know what I'm saying? But then once you have the profit and your business is rolling, then what do you make it about? Because at that time, I think what happens during kind of the success time, at least it's what happened to me, almost all of my employees wanted to quit. Haha, <laughs> right? Because guess who I was making it about? Me. I was thinking about me every single day. Like, how can I get more clients? How can I grow this business? How can I serve these clients? And I completely forgot about my number one client is actually my team. What would make me not want to or have to leave a business that I was in? Like if I was working for someone else. And I thought two things. Freedom to pursue personal passions and projects. Like, I want someone to be interested in things that I like to do, right, and, and, and help me. Maybe pay for a conference or give me time off to attend certain things, one. Two, I want there to be a culture of camaraderie and fun, you know, because ultimately, it's about what you're doing every single day with who you're doing it with. So the key question that I asked myself was, how could I create a business where no one would have to or want to leave? When you can create a culture 
Then people will want to stay, stay with you. Ask yourself deeper questions, search for fulfillment, don't feel like you're all alone, that you have multiple passions, pursue multiple things because that will fill your well up and it will bleed out into everything that you do and you will create a more profitable and most importantly, a more fulfilling life and business.